Brian Harding. <laughs> so they tell me. <laughs> uh, new year, new you. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any uh, New Year's uh, revolutions where you just spin around and you go back to Y2K? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably what it'll be. You know, just <laughs> travel back in time. And so a uh, three-time Splatterpunk Award winner. Four, actually. Four time. Ooh, mm -hmm. they need to update your IMDb. <laughs> four time Splatterpunk Award winner. Is it yeah, true the, that the, you... se the sequel to the third Splatterpunk Award was the fourth one. Fourth one was the Night Stalkers. Oh, okay. So four times. Is it true that you've hot glue gunned all of your trophies to the hood of your car? Uh, no, I actually hot glued them to my dick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of back a lot of back problems now. But, you know. <laughs> I wish I could do that. I just don't have any trophies, and there's not enough space to work with down there. <laughs> so, if you could be an American Gladiator, what would your name be? <laughs> Slayer. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm just glad you didn't say smallpox blanket, right? <laughs> I want to change my answer. <laughs> uh, so in your new collection, you wrote a story about having sex with trees, right? Uh, yeah, that does feature in The Secreter, yes. Yes. And what was your inspiration? Was it drawn from real life or was it? Yeah, it was a rough relationship with this tree <laughs> that I was trying to work through some things. but <laughs> Did the trophies kind of help? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're they're gnarly. Yeah, you also wrote Genital Grinder. It's considered one of the great collections of splatterpunk horror. Um, did you think that like a genital grinder is also the weirdest uh, attachment for a KitchenAid mixer? <laughs> I mean, I just kind of assumed it was the most obligatory <laughs> the kitchen attachments. I don't know how what else he would buy it for, really, but. You're also known to be the tallest horror author known to man. How tall are you? Uh, I think about 6'6". Six, six. I think the same height as Raph. Okay. And um, are you naturally tall or do you use one of those stretch machines? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, most nights I get on the device so it like pulls me <laughs> like <laughs> towards a rack so I maintain <laughs> my my girlish height. <laughs> Uh, do you know uh, Amazon Alexa is only eight years old? I did not. I just found out yesterday. I had to take her out of my butt, right? No, <laughs> 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 <Still> kind of awkward. <laughs> I didn't know. I was going to ask if you asked her out on a date, <laughs> so you, you took it even more awkward than I was going. <laughs> when you do like IQ tests or something, you have to fill in the third word. Right. So, reincarnage, reincursion, re. Re and <laughs> reinfection. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. It's like uh, something that happens after the uh, the trophies on the wiener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has happened actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is happening. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were gonna say reinvest, which is just like the the most boring <laughs> horror novel. <laughs> so the slasher in your reincarnant is named agent orange correct yes vietnam kind of guy mm -hmm. that's right and uh did you just choose him because the name colonel tangerine was already taken <laughs> yeah the, yeah i mean brainstorming with jason taverner and that was top of this top of the pops but we were like oh it's been taken it's been trademarked so what are we gonna do now <laughs> like well agent orange i guess did a find and replace and there it was <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you wrote a book called Night Stalkers with Christopher Triana, am I right? That's right. Um, do you have a favorite Richard Ramirez quote? <laughs> uh, actually, I sent Chris a copy of Transcendental Mutilation uh, <laughs> a few weeks back, and uh, I wrote uh, See You in Disneyland on it. <laughs> All <laughs> I right. Figured, I figured he would get that. So, no, so you do actually have <laughs> <laughs> Well, I also like... Uh, well, the whole quote, the whole big deal, death always came with the territory, I'll see you at Disneyland. <laughs> that is a pretty crazy quote. Yeah. I forgot about that, actually. <laughs> What's your favorite? 
Uh, probably that one. I'm just gonna copy you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the only one I remember from like a documentary or something. Yeah. Uh, so, in all seriousness, this book is about a, a satanic grocery store. Right? right, devil's food. And which uh, grocery store in the real world do you think would be the most satanic? <laughs> probably Walmart. Sam Walton was a you know, closet devil worshiper, probably. Yeah, him and Walt Disney or something. I feel like they're all kind of satanic now with those prices, am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything's yeah. 666 now that used to be about, you know, two ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, it's like $10 for a can of uh, beef legs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so how long have you been a practicing Satanist? I mean, is it still practicing? Is, it, <laughs> is there any part where you just become a professional? But... <laughs> Pandemonium, you wrote that with Lucas Mangum, right? We did. And uh, his ancestor's name used to be Magnum, but in Ellis Island, they shortened it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's too long. We're going to shorten that before you <laughs> get out of the shadow of the Statue of Liberty here. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's a wrestling horror story in the vein of the movie Demons. All right. That's correct. An awesome movie, by the way. Awesome yeah. book, too. Awesome I love book. It. Thank you. Uh, did you hear Vince McMahon just stepped down for sexual assault and sex trafficking? I did not. <laughs> yeah, he just stepped down. But do you think it's all like an advertisement for WrestleMania? Oh, well, next Summer Slam might be <laughs> more like a Summer Slammer. <laughs> <laughs> Hell in a cell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, here's a good one. Handshake, high five, or butt pinch. Jeffrey Dahmer, Woody Allen, or Joy Behar. <laughs> I guess Joy gets the pipe pinch. <laughs> Tep can have the handshake, and who was the other? Woody Allen. <laughs> Woody Allen gets the high five. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only way to answer that one. <laughs> you worked on Header 3. Is it true that you were the inspiration for the series? Uh, that is definitely a fact that in the, the hawk party was all just based on my <laughs> life experiences <laughs> so Edward Lee writes the first two and then he's writing the, the third one he's like I need to call up someone that has some real world experience here right. I just I know just the guy right yeah he was like I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck I don't know where to go with this I'm just gonna go <laughs> right back to the source <laughs> yeah uh favorite uh memory from the 90s was it that cartoon pizza weasels <laughs> Let's say, uh, the OK Cola, <laughs> finding out it was not OK. All right. Well, do you have a favorite holiday? Halloween. Hmm. Do you feel like Christmas is the new Halloween? I'm trying to make it that way, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, the mills grind slowly. Um, what are you working on right now? Uh, collaboration with Brian Smith and a short story for K. Trap Jones for his uh, Southern Horror Anthology. Very cool, very cool. So I have a special thing here for you, and I was hoping you could give me some pointers. That's what you gave to Alexa. Yes, sir. So I have this, and I have... <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that you could tell me the perfect uh, technique if you're going to do... A... <laughs> I th yeah i think you want to do it like kind of like right there on the skull like not at the very top but kind of at an angle toward the like back of the skull but yeah but on the reverse mm -hmm. of, yeah on the rear of the, yeah like right okay. in there let's see if it works <laughs> I think this will work. Yeah, yeah. It's the perfect size, too. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely it's going to work for me. <laughs> Thank you. This guy has uh, eyebrows and stuff we're supposed to move. <laughs> Real son of a bitch. Just... <laughs> well, you won't even have to do Yeah, when you put your dick in, it'll just do it automatically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, then it'll go. <laughs> yeah. Seen any uh, good movies lately? Gosh, I actually like to leave the world behind. I watched that on Netflix recently. I actually enjoyed that. I kind of didn't think I would. Uh, I went to see some Argento 
films at the theater, uh, Tenebrae and Opera recently. Oh, that's awesome. Big fan of the uh, Italian horror. Oh, yeah. I love Euro horror. There's all kinds of like allusions to that stuff and pandemonium. My favorite uh, European horror movie, I think, is uh, those Korean ones. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying a few things. East, East Korea, yeah. <laughs> uh, Transcendental Mutilation. This book is, what, 10 years in the making? Uh, yeah. Uh, there's stories I've started, I started doing after Genital Grinder, which came out in 2012. And I want to say, uh, I wrote the first one toward the end of 2013 after KillerCon when Jeff Burke asked me to do one for the Bizarro zine that he was editing. So that was the very first story, and it's the first one in the book. If I flip to a random page and read a line, would you be able to tell me what story it's from? I think so. Perhaps the worst thing for Tilda, even beyond witnessing Michael's suffering, was the grumbling from her stomach at the scent of cooking meat. Angel Bay. You're good. The guy knows this stuff. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite uh, three book, three stories from the collection? I would say Angel Bait is one of them because it's purely the most disgusting one in there and probably might be the most disgusting one I've ever written. So <laughs> <laughs> as a special distinction there, it was also one of the Splatterpunk winners. So I, I like that one, uh, Temple and Amducius is the newest story in the collection, which is the only one that hasn't been collected anywhere already. That one, is, uh, really happy how that one came out, and I think it has the best writing of uh, any of the stories in there. The Sea Creator, which you know, also uh, one of the Splatterpunk winners. Where can people find you? Well, I'm on X slash Twitter at NecroAF. It's my handle on there, and I'm on Facebook. At uh, I think it's facebook.com slash Ryan Hard Morbid, all one word. <laughs> At hotmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you uh, for coming on, Ryan. I'm just going to press the stop record here. And thank, thank you. Thank you for having me.